Well, in preparation for the now scrapped route, hundreds of homes and businesses were bought up by HS2 Limited, the government-owned company building the railway. But what will happen to those properties now? Well, Lewis Warner is live in Long Eaton in Derbyshire for us this evening, which, Lewis, I guess, is pretty typical of many towns and villages which have had its communities changed forever. Well, yes, homeowners on streets like this one say they've been living in limbo for the last few years after finding out they were on the route for HS2. This road here, Bonsall Street, was uh, told it was going to be ripped in two. The houses on this side would certainly be gone over there. They would stay, but they'd have HS2 running down the middle. Now, many people here are pleased that their homes are safe. However, for those that have already moved out, they say the agony of the last few years was completely unnecessary. This is as close as Valerie can get to her former home of 30 years. She lived on Bonsall Street in Long Eaton until two years ago, when her home was bought by HS2 via compulsory purchase. Now the line won't come this far north, meaning she moved for nothing. I'm, I'm glad that, that it's been scrapped, that HS2 has been scrapped, but I'm very disappointed that I've given my home up for all them years for, for no need, very unnecessarily, and the stress that went with it. Uh, which went on for years. Would you still be living there now? Yes, I would have been. Yes, because I've got very happy memories there and there was nothing wanted to do into the house. Quite emotional because I had a lot of happy years here. You know, a lot of happy years. But Valerie isn't alone. Diane Scott needlessly moved out of her 17th century cottage in Long Eaton. She'd lived there for 19 years and spent £100,000 updating it. In 2018, we filmed with her as HS2 haggled over the price of her dream home. After much back and forth, she eventually reached a deal to sell. Today's decision comes too late for Diane. As it does for Roger Lim. We filmed with him in 2013. Roger had lived in a former railway station house for 50 years. He moved away, leaving the house empty, all for nothing. In Long Eaton Town Centre, protesters gathered to hear the news being announced in the Commons and breathe a collective sigh of relief. Elated and delighted that this isn't going to happen. It's been hanging over our heads for four or five years now. My wife's got cancer and the last thing we needed was more disruption. I would have been able to see it and hear it from my front room and I heard it was like six trains an hour. Oh yeah, it's been worrying. It's been a very stressful time. It's something we could, oh, could have done without. I'm very pleased. And I just hope that the, the plan that they have got is going to be suitable for our environment, for our commuting. On Tyree Close in Trow, homeowners can sleep easy after years of uncertainty. Stephen Harold agrees with the government's new plan to stop HS2 trains south of Toton at East Midlands Parkway. You know, I'm being biased, but it makes perfect sense to have it on, on there. It, it's closer to all the infrastructures closer to Castle Donington Industrial Estate, it's, castle, uh, it's closer to the motorway. It makes perfect sense to do that. At this upholstery warehouse in Long Eaton, staff have been making sofas and cushions for 57 years. They lost one warehouse to a compulsory purchase. The owner says it put the business under a lot of strain and that somebody needs to answer for the money that's been wasted. The amount of money that's been spent, I know from our point of view, the, the money that's been spent on just this few metres of, of line uh, is incredible and I do think somebody should be accountable, definitely. Hundreds of homes and businesses were taken on by HS2 Limited. If former owners now want their properties back, they might not be happy. Alistair Frew is a solicitor from Sutton Coldfield. He's dealt with clients that have lost property to HS2 and says they have to be willing to pay a higher price. If the government forces you to sell or threatens that it's about to force you to sell, you can seek under what we call the Critchell, Critchell Down guidelines, you can make the government sell it back to you at market value. However, that's the new market value, not the old market value. After years of debate, many homeowners are now free from the fear that HS2 brought them. But their communities have been changed forever. Well, in the last few days, I've been speaking to many people who say they're going to really now try and put the last few years of HS2 uncertainty to the back of their minds. They hope that this decision today will finally allow them to do that for good.